everyone welcome back and in this video i'll be giving you some information on user story acceptance criteria so basically there are some rules that you need to follow when writing acceptance criteria so i'll be giving you some information on this so let's get into it so to start off what is a, an acceptance criteria so an acceptance criteria these are a set of conditions a product must meet to be uh, you know accepted by a user a customer or any other system okay so this acceptance criteria can be at a product level but since in this video we are going to see it at a user story level so this acceptance criteria can also be applicable to user stories because at the ultimate uh, goal you would see that these acceptance criteria would also lead to the final acceptance criteria of the product so usually it is written by a business analyst because if you see here the product owner they would be writing the user story and after that the business analyst they would be writing down the acceptance criteria and further details about the user story so that's about the acceptance criteria so to take an example let's take an example of a user story so for example we can see as a customer i should be able to view the product catalog so that i will be able to choose items that i would like to buy so this is a user story now we all know that user stories yes it's a requirement from the user perspective and it's a requirement by itself but is this requirement enough to you know execute or develop this functionality no there needs to be some amount of details that is added so that it would give more clarity to what needs to be developed and how it needs to be developed so you would have with just this user story and just taking this particular point view the product catalog there would be different questions that would come up for example where will the user need to go to view the product catalog you say that yes the user needs to view the product catalog but how is the user going to access this product catalog is one question that can arise the next one is okay let's assume that they have accessed the product catalog what information needs to be shown in the product catalog these are some example questions that can arise with just a user story and not providing enough details so that's where acceptance criteria comes into the picture so if you see the ways to write acceptance criteria for a user story there are two basic techniques that you can use one is the checklist way of writing acceptance criteria and the other one is the given when then format so let's take the first one the checklist so the checklist is going to be just a simple list of items which you list down okay and it can be in the form of a checklist so this can be very uh, you know um, easy to write and it's also going to be easily understandable also by the user because you have a simple list of what needs to be done and what needs to be achieved in order for that user story to be you know labeled as complete so this is the first way and the second way is using the given when then format so in this format you would give in the given section you would mention given there is something that is already you know accomplished or done when the user maybe takes a particular action or when something is of a particular stage what needs to be done then comes the then scenario so then you can take this particular action so this is the second way of writing acceptance criteria so now let's look at it with a example so if you take the previous example that i showed you as a customer i would like to view the product catalog so that i would be able to choose the items that i would like to buy so taking the very first way of writing the acceptance criteria the checklist method i would have some checklist items so one could be user should be able to click on the catalog tab and view the product catalog so now i have given details of how the user is going to access that particular product catalog so it's by clicking on the product tab the next one is the user should be able to view the product name description price and the stock details so in this particular uh, acceptance criteria i have given the criteria of the details that the user should be able to view in order to say that yes this is a product catalog and it's going to provide value and the third one is the user should be able to click on a particular product and then be redirected to the details page so in this stage in this particular item i have said that when a user clicks on a particular product what the user should be 
viewing and where the user should be redirected to. So this is a full picture of what I require when the user as a user, when I come into the product catalog and I'm viewing this product catalog. So this is with the first basic checklist scenario. The next one is the given when then format. So in the given section, I state that the user has logged into the website. So let's say the user is already onboarded and logged into the website. When the user clicks on the catalog tab, okay, so I'm saying when the user clicks on this tab, then the user should be able to view the list of products and the user should be able to view the product name, description, price and stock for each product. And the user should be able to be redirected to the product's details page when clicking on a particular product. So you, if you notice here, it's having the same details, which is also in the checklist. So it's almost the same. It depends which one you feel comfortable with. And there are certain scenarios in which simple checklists can be utilized, whereas there will be certain scenarios when the given then when then format would make much more sense and it would be easy to understand by other users. So another thing to notice over here is below in the then section, you can have different criteria, sub criteria using the and operator. So this is something that you can note. Also in the given section, you can have multiple given criteria by adding the and operator. So this is about the given when then format. So now, given this, what are the uses of this acceptance criteria? I think by now you would have got to know the uses of the acceptance criteria. But adding to that is, it gives the scope for the story. So now the entire story, there is a scope of what is required for that story to be completed. The second um, advantage is, it gives all the details about the expected solution that is required. So now here we know all the details and what needs to be completed for that user story to be you know, complete. And it also assists in the testing phase to review and verify if a story can be considered as completed. So now business analysts, they give out the, you know, during a kickoff se uh, se uh, session, they give the story, they explain the details about the user story to the developers. After that's being done, of course, the business analyst also would review that and see whether all the acceptance criteria are being satisfied at the overall abstract and functional level so it would assist the business analyst to check off if all the acceptance criteria are being satisfied and also furthermore it would help the quality analysts also on their end to have an overall or base uh, structure of what are the acceptance criteria so that furthermore they can take up the analysis on their, their end so these are some uses of the acceptance criteria and another point notice is when are acceptance criteria is written. So acceptance criteria need to be written for a story before it is pulled to the sprint backlog. Okay, so before it's moved to the sprint backlog, make sure that the acceptance criteria are written. Of course, user stories can be written down any time in the entire journey, but it's okay to write down user stories. But when that's going to be moved to a sprint, okay, a particular upcoming sprint, the developers and the team need to know what is the scope of that user story in order to determine if that can be taken into that particular sprint or iteration. So always before it's moved, before moving it into the sprint backlog, make sure that the acceptance criteria are almost jotted down. There can be certain exceptional cases where sometimes there might be some other criteria that get added on during the sprint, but that's okay. But 95 to 96% make sure that the acceptance criteria are already fixed due when before it's moved to a sprint backlog. So that's it for this video. I hope that this was useful. And if you found this informative, please do give this a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe to this channel and also do share your feedbacks. Thank you.